What's your, tis but a scratch moment? I got hit by a car my freshman year of high school. I went flying lost consciousness for a split second when I hit the ground. Thank god for helmet. When I came to people were all around me asking if I was okay, and what happened etc. I was like oh yay, I'm good, I'm gonna just get back on my bike and go now, but didn't really move. Then people started asking me to call an ambulance and my mom etc. I was like why, I'm good. I even told my mom on the phone I was still gonna bike home but as I was saying that, the people around me had started to move one of my legs and I watched as my foot proceeded to not move. I had broken both bones in my leg completely in half and part of ankle. Just pure adrenaline and shock. I also vividly remember thinking how this is what it feels like to get hit by a car. Also the leg wasn't setting right, probably from movement, and the doctor decided to put me on laughing gas as he tried to crack my bones back into place, was in a stupor laughing as I felt my bones grind. Yeah adrenaline is mad. I am a bartender in a nightclub. One night while working I was pouring a drink while I reached back with my other hand to open a fridge, and that's when I heard a pop and got a huge pain in my back shoulder area. The pain was pretty bad, but I was sure it was a pulled muscle and there won't be much point in seeing a doctor other than getting meds. So I waited, fought through the pain which was so bad at times it was making it hard to breath. That was a Friday. I called off Saturday and had Sunday Monday Tuesday off before I went back to work Wednesday. Once I biked into work, in all I waited 9 days total before finally deciding to go to the air. I had a collapsed lung, called a spontaneous pneumothorax. 20 minutes after getting to the air I was put into emergency surgery. I was essentially breathing with only one lung, and any major impact to my chest would have collapsed the other and probably killed me. A couple weeks ago, I stepped on an ant hill and got a bunch of ant bites on my ankles. 3-4 days later, the itching was unbearable. I wasn't sleeping, my legs were swollen, and no amount of Benadryl or antihistamine cream was helping the itching. I finally went to a clinic to get a shot or whatever, because I clearly having some sort of allergic reaction. It was a staph infection that had spread from my ankles up to my knees. I would have died if this 1920 instead of 2020. I was on antibiotics for 10 days, and now several weeks later, the dead skin from the infection is still flaking off. TL. DR. Scratched ant bites with unclean hands and gave myself a staph infection. Ignored it for several days because it was just some bug bites. My little sister fell down about 15 steps at our grandma's house when she was a toddler. She got up giggled and went to go eat some snacks. This other time, still a toddler, she was supposed to be napping. We were in the living room and heard a huge thud. We ran to the room thinking she'd fell out of the bed. Nope. She somehow managed to pull the TV down. This was the early 2000s. TVs were heavy af, and it fell on top of her. She was laying there in snow angel position and my mom freaked out. When we got the TV off her, she got up and asked for ice. Not to soothe pain but to eat. My little sister was and still is a champ. Kids are made of rubber. I got hit by a car while riding my bicycle. Flew through the air. Bounced off his windshield breaking his windshield. My helmet and two vertebrae. Then thrown to the ground where my kneecap shattered and bone was sticking out of the skin. And as I lay there in shock. Unaware of how badly I was injured. I thought I might be able to get back on my bike and ride home. Shock is a hell of a drug. I broke my neck on a huge Shurabrik wave and didn't want to leave the beach so I continued swimming and playing volleyball until my friends noticed my neck was swelling up bigger than my head. Holy crap. Lucky you didn't paralyze yourself. Back in my baseball days, when I was pitching, I completely lost a pitch, and it beamed a guy in the jaw. He throws his bat down, glares at me with the glariest of glares ever glared, spits out blood, then calmly runs to first base as though nothing happened. It was terrifyingly badass. Still better than spitting out blood after getting to third base. I was mountain biking and fell off. I fell down part of the mountain and into a road where I almost got hit by a car. I got up quickly, thanked the driver for not killing me and then got back on the bike, 
I knew the road would meet up with the trail I was on so I could meet up with my group who hasn't seen me fall. When I got to them, one of them looked at me and was like, what happened? I got off the bike, walked over whilst we waited for the others to catch up and just said I fell off. He then looked down at me and was like what the heck happened? I'm like it's nothing. A few cuts and scratches on my hands and arms. My leg was bleeding from earlier and that was it. Then I looked down and realized I had scratched off half the skin on my leg from falling on the road. Basically a bad case of road burn. From all the adrenaline I hadn't even felt it. They called someone to come and get me from the mountains. I wasn't allowed to continue. And one of the other riders saw my leg and decided they wanted to stop too. I just went to a pharmacy, grabbed some wipes and bandages then we got a drink whilst we waited for everyone else to finish. Skin is for the weak. <laughs> Fell off my bike and dislocated my shoulder. Popped it back in and kept on going. Trapped a nerve but it's okay 90% of the time now. Another time I fell in a some glass. Pulled out most of it from my hands and pulled out a piece 9 days after the wound had fully healed. I felt a weird pressure when I'd hold things so I had a feel around and cut the glass out. I popped my shoulder back in after falling while skiing and now I get gnarly knots in the muscle right underneath. Massages and stuff help but I probably should have gone to the doctor. I broke my arm at the skating rink and skated for an hour before I even left. Then, after I left there, I went to a playground W my BF at the time and hung out. I didn't go to the hospital until the next day. Similar, ice skating rink, fell and caught myself on my hands, got up and continued skating. The only way I knew how to stop was just going into the wall and catching myself. I spent a long time skating after I fell. Until my mum shouted at me to come over. My arm was black from near the end of my pinky to about halfway down my forearm. Fractured my wrist. A few years ago, I was sick. Not fun, but it was only a bug. I'd be okay in a couple days maximum. I started to get an unusual pain in my abdomen as the day wore on. But to me it was just a side effect of all the throwing up I'd been doing. I spent the night in the spare room for two reasons. One because I was so frickin hot and two, in case I needed to get up, I didn't disturb my partner who would be getting up early for work, I managed to get an okay night of sleep, with the vomiting having stopped, but I still felt crap, when my partner came to see me before he went to work, he asked how I was, I still felt terrible, but it was a tummy bug, I wasn't going to be instantly better, but that sharp pain was still there, on hearing that I still was in pain, he insisted on taking me to hospital. I didn't think it was at all necessary, but I was too exhausted to argue. When we got to the hospital, I made dang sure the person at the front desk knew I thought this was a waste of time. After a lot of prodding and questions about if I was pregnant, it turned out it was my appendix in the process of rupturing. I broke my toe running up the stairs and I ran back down the stair thinking I just stubbed it until my toe turned purple. Did something similar two weeks ago. Tried to close a drawer with my foot but just straight up kicked the corner of it, but kept walking the rest of the day, and only figured out it was really bad the next day when the toe was purple and I couldn't walk. Got blackout drunk while camping and fell hands first onto the grate that had been over the fire for hours. My wife and friends were all freaking out thinking I definitely had third degree burns. I came out of my blackout in the bathroom with all of them trying to wash my hands in cold water. When all the soot came off, I was somehow completely unharmed. Since then I've been no as the unburned. The soot definitely saved your hands lol. Carbon is awful at transferring heat. My first job was as a butcher and I came into work one day with a raging hangover. I sharpened the knives. They were crap ones that went blunt all the time, and immediately proceeded to cut my finger open. I thought nothing of it, went about my shift and when I got home to put a proper dressing on it I found out it was as deep as the bone and I wouldn't get feeling back in the end of it for literally years. Fellow butcher here, I'm familiar with the Olay thought nothing of it method of first aid. Onwards. Rolled my car, got out of the car bewildered and in shock, noticing a kink in my neck. As someone who constantly cracks my knuckles back neck, my instinct was just ah, I'm not hurt, thank god, just need to crack my neck and I'll be fine. Before I finished processing that train of thought I was held down in C-spine by the person behind me who had watched my crash. 
Luckily he was an off-duty firefighter. I had broken three vertebrae in my neck. I just couldn't tell it yet from the adrenaline and shock. Required full surgery to fuse together with bone from my hip and plate screws. Had there not been someone behind me and had I proceeded with my tis but a scratch instincts I'd be paralyzed or dead. Jesus. I'm so glad he acted so quickly to immobilize you. Not me but my teacher. She said that one time when she was in college she was in a classroom and her foot was stuck on something but she just yanked back and was fine but she was looking up the whole time. She got to her dorm and took off her shoe and it was soaked in blood and her foot was stabbed by a loose piece of metal. I shouldn't be reading these. These are nauseating. When I was very young I pulled a tablecloth and managed to dump a freshly boiled pot of tea all over myself. I get rushed to hospital. My skin is red and bubbling. I should be in floods of tears. Instead, I proudly point to my ruined skin and proclaim to the paramedic I did that. Over 30 years later and I still have some scars. But I am definitely no longer that hardcore. Comma instead. I proudly point to my ruined skin and proclaim to the paramedic I did that. This made me laugh. Yesterday when I got home from work, my wife was telling me how she took our 2 year old son to the playground. She told me all sorts of things he did. I asked him if he had fun at the park. He said I fell on head and started laughing. When I was a small dumbass child, I had a habit of gripping door frames when walking through the door. I did not discriminate between the latch side or the hinge side. Door gets closed and my fingers get crushed in the hinge. To the point where there's a dark purple line across them and a tangible groove. My mom starts completely freaking out over the injury. But I, brave little dumbass I was, saw the distress she was in at what had happened. I put on my bravest face, my eyes welling up in tears from the pain, and said, don't worry mommy, it'll heal. I was right, it did, but still. I walked under a pine tree barefoot and stepped on something that mildly hurt. Went back inside and was cleaning my bathroom when I looked in the mirror and saw whole bloody footprints covering the floor behind me in a line down the hall. For a minute I thought I was being haunted or something. I was making a ninja mask. I had a piece of cloth and I was trying to cut the eye holes out of it using a small steak knife. No, it wasn't on my face. I wasn't quite that stupid. But I was holding the cloth and cutting with the knife. The knife slipped and went straight into my pinky finger. I had to actually pull the knife out. It went right beside my joint and stabbed straight through the flesh on my pinky. I pulled the knife out and blood was just pouring out of me. Which was weird to me at the time. I didn't realize a pinky would bleed that much. The worst part is, I was home alone. It didn't really hurt that badly. Strange as it may seem, it was honestly no worse than a regular cut. Pain wise. Anyway the blood was coming out at a rate which I had never before seen. I went to the bathroom and wrapped like 7 band-aids around it and then took some masking tape and wrapped that around all the band-aids. I was like, surely that'll stop the bleeding. I said frick the ninja mask and sat on my couch watching TV for a bit. Then noticed the tape was starting to slide off. I'd bled through it and all the band-aids in maybe 5 minutes maximum. So I got some paper towels and decided to hold pressure on it but the cut wasn't very symmetrical. I couldn't figure out how to get the skin back together. I did the best I could and bled through a bunch of paper towels and finally was like, Frick I think I'm gonna have to call 9 one one So I called 911. They came out and by the time they got there I was feeling rather weak. There was blood all over my sinks, bathroom and kitchen, and some on the floor. They transported me to the hospital and gave me stitches. Healed up good as new in a couple weeks. Doctor said I was lucky I didn't sever any tendons. My mom came to the air to take me home. It was kind of an awkward ride. She bitched at me some for being too old to be doing this kind of crap. The kicker is, I really was too old to be having accidents like that. You're probably picturing a 10 or 11 year old kid. Yeah, no, I was 19. Separated two ribs when I slipped going up a staircase. I went down to radiology at work and got an x-ray. Looked at it and said okay no breaks and just walked over to the ear and got two big rolls of ace bandages. Went back to my desk and took off my shirt and t-shirt. Boss walks in and sees the bruises on my chest. Then I said no biggie just don't make me laugh told him what happened wrapped myself up and went on with life. Boss goes. Why are you disrobing at your desk you're a receptionist for god's sake. 
I was a kid visiting family in West Virginia and was playing with some other kids which somehow involved me being in a tree. I got a little cut on my hand and was inconsolable. Ran to the house for my mom to make it better. She put the smallest of band-aids on it. When I turned around and started walking out of the house she started yelling and I was just looked at her like. What there was a trail of blood coming from the back of my leg. Didn't even notice. If you can't see it it doesn't hurt. Absolutely shattered my wrist. Pulverized a couple couples into dust. Fractured my scaphoid bone and flipped it 180 degrees. Spent two days trying to convince myself it was but a simple sprain. When I finally went to a doctor they rushed me into emergency surgery. Later found out the doctors couldn't believe I wasn't incapacitated by pain. Whoops. Did a similar thing but instead they missed it on the x-ray because the bones were crushed, not broken. So I had to live with that pain for two weeks before they finally caught a colon. Broke my tailbone and didn't know for 6 months. When I was younger, like really young, I had escaped from the house and at the time my dad was just about to drive to work. I had managed to get just behind the wheel of the car and got ran over. Got rushed to hospital and at around midnight parents got a call from hospital because I was running around the place like a lunatic waking all the other kids up and basically I got away with a car tire mark and that's it. TLDR. I was a super baby who got ran over and didn't break a single thing. How in the name of all that is anything were you absolutely fine? Have an upvote. I actually got stabbed one time in my lower thigh. Walked to the hospital with my coat covering it cuz I didn't wanna freak out any kids. All thanks to the wonderful thing called alcohol. Stung like a bee the next day though. For some reason I pictured you hiding the knife that was still stuck in your thigh. When I was a teenager I got jumped by a hoodlum trying to mug me. I was just walking along and they snuck up behind me and cracked me in the spine with an iron bar. Somehow the blow, instead of being painful, just went completely numb so I turned around and said what the frick was that. I lll never forget the look of fear on the guy's face. He just dropped the bar and ran. Still get a weird numb spot on my back from time to time. He probably thought he'd picked a fight with a superhero. I ran into the top of a door frame did the whole cartoon head outside. Legs flying inside and then falling on my back. Head hurt a tiny bit so I covered my forehead with my hand with some pressure for a minute. When I removed my hand and tried to get up, my friends who were crowded over me collectively gasped. Turns out I had split my forehead skin open and they could see the bone. I literally wouldn't have known if they hadn't been so freaked out. Couldn't feel a thing. Got 5 stitches and a small scar near my hairline. You're a wizard, Harry. When I fell through a window and cut my stomach open, my colon and stomach both fell out of my body while I caught and looked up at my friends bleeding out, was in shock, but alas tis but a scratch still here today. You win. A slab of glass shattered and fell on me and my mom. I checked mum for any injuries and went to clean up the mess which was promptly followed by my mother screaming and flipping her crap. Apparently I had left a trail of blood around the house because the glass left a deep gash on my foot. She even scolded me because I was laughing at the whole situation. Ah, fun times. When I was in elementary school we used to play this game at recess where we would try and see how many people we could fit in the tube slide without the person at the bottom falling out. When it came to be my turn to be the person at the bottom I thought I was being smart by bracing my hands against the wall of the slide. Next kid came sliding down and his foot hit the perfect spot on my hand and dislocated my thumb at the second joint. Other kids laughing that I could only hold one kid in when I held my hand up and smiled and said watch how fast I can make my thumb grow and pulled it back into place with a loud pop. One of the kids freaked out and told me and I got sent home for the day but I felt like the coolest 4th grader there ever was for not freaking out when my bone wasn't where it should have been. When I was 10, I was a gymnast and we were practicing a bunch of tumbling passes for a show we were putting on for kids in a summer camp who were coming to use our gym one day. For the show, we had the lights down and were only using a spotlight. Well one of the girls did a tumbling pass and landed weirdly. She got up and hobbled to the back of the line and when it was her turn again, she tried to run and immediately fell and got up and tried again and the same thing happened. Then the poor girl behind her casually said, your bone is sticking out. The lights came on and sure enough, 
The girl's shin bone, maybe, was protruding from her shin. She didn't realize it and had still been trying to tumble but her leg just simply didn't work. I actually saw a few bones just sticking out of my fellow gymnasts now that I think about it. When I was 6, I badly bruised my arm when performing cartwheels and backflips and at first when I fell it was no big deal until my arm was swollen and I couldn't bend it. Had to wear a cast for a few weeks. Riding my bike. Got hit by a car. The driver of the car behind the guy that hit me got out and ran up to me telling me she was going to call the paramedics. To stay still. Help is coming. I got up. Told the guy who hit me. Dude never even got out of his car. Only rolled down the window a few inches. To watch what he's doing and be more careful in the future. Thank the lady who was trying to help. But looked over my bike and since it was still rideable. Continued on my way. I later found out I broke my leg. When I was in 7th grade I slept over at a friend's place and early that morning we went to go run my paper route. With the plan that afterwards we would get fresh baked donuts from the nearby grocery store and then go back and play Mario Kart all morning. On the way to the grocery store I hit some black ice on my bike, locked up the brakes and flipped over the handlebars when the tires hit dry cement again. I fasciplanted into street and had gravel in my gums and cut into my right palm. I brushed it off. We got donuts and played snares. Although I couldn't hold the controller with my right hand. So I kinda just twiddled my fingers over the buttons. Later we made chocolate chip waffles and went back to snares. When my mom came to pick me up around noon my wrist was swollen to three times its normal size and I could barely move my hand. She took me to the air where we discovered it was broken. I just dealt with it all morning because, Nintendo. That sounds like the most fun morning ever. When I was in kindergarten my and my friends were attempting to climb a gate, and one of the metal wires was sticking out. I fell, and the wire cut from right above my ankle to my knee. I think my reaction was oh look, blood. I don't know how much this counts because it wasn't due to an injury. After spending a summer doing food truck events, I was gaining some weight. I figured I just got fat from eating too much junk at the events, so I started dieting and running 3-4 times a week. But the fat wasn't going anywhere. I saw the doctor a couple months later, and it turns out it was an 8.5 ovarian cyst over my abdomen. Not fat. Oops. I have a couple stories. When I was younger I had an issue with my knee where it would lock up, essentially dislocating in a minor way. First time it happened I was snowboarding. Fell face forward and when I tried to straighten my leg it was incredibly painful. I sat on hands and knees for a couple minutes then decided that I had no other option. Gretted my teeth and straightened my leg. There was a loud pop, a very notable shifting of bones, and quite the feeling of crepitus but 2 seconds later I was continuing down the hill and forgetting about it. Well, it happened again, repeatedly, and every time I would just pop my knee back into place and keep going. It really freaked out people when it happened during soccer games. One time it even happened while having sex. Fortunately she had seen me pop it back in before so she wasn't as freaked out. Eventually had surgery and found out that I had torn my lateral meniscus, cartilage in the knee, and a flap was lodging itself between the bones. Also when younger, I hurt my ankle jumping off a big snow mound, was strictly prohibited by school. I figured it was just sprained and while it hurt, I hobbled around for a while. Even played two soccer games on it with a significant amount of ace bandage securing it. Eventually it wasn't getting better so I told my mom. I had a fracture about halfway through the distal end of my tibia. Who knows how small it was when it first happened but definitely made it worse by waiting. Lastly, just a couple years ago, I was chasing my daughter at the playground and ducked down under a chest level platform while following her. Came back up on the other side and ran full speed into a hand railing with my face. As usual for head injuries there was blood everywhere. My daughter, about 6 at the time, started to freak out for a second then realized that I was totally calm. Walked to my parents house right down the road, grabbed some tissues, and drove to the ED. I had a comminuted fracture of the front face of my nose meaning it was broken into about 4 smaller pieces and at least one other fracture back in my sinuses. All the playground say parental supervision required, I didn't realize it was the parents that needed to be supervised. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video.
bye for now.